Welcome everyone. This is my new devlog series about my engine, which I'm currently writing. My goal is to write a 3D game engine, which has different, uh, which is uh, which is going to have different renderers, and uh, it should be able to work on old hardware as well. This is why I'm implementing a software rasterizer at first. Here you can see on the screen uh, my current result. So I got some basic texture mapping working now and it's possible to, to load textures from different file formats, namely bitmap and PNG so far. I, I think that even more are working, that probably something like JPEG works as well, but I haven't tested so far. So I think it might work, but as you can see, um, I can load textures and put them onto triangles. So currently I have three triangles um, with diff different sizes. So one, one triangle works as, as a background basically. And since this is a software rasterizer currently, the performance is, is quite interesting. So with this uh, full screen, full HD resolution at 1080p, I have about, um, let's see it, I have about 60 to 70 FPS right now. And it was very interesting for me to implement this whole multi-threading thing, which I have never done before. So um, I just tested out earlier how this performance is when my software rasterizer works single threadedly then it's about 31 frames per second or or up to 33 sec uh, fps but uh soft uh, but yeah but multi-threaded it's about 70 roughly and of course my processor is very important in this regard as well so i have a i7 3770 so it's a um, yeah, it's some kind of old processor. I, I believe it's from 2009. But anyway, this whole uh, multi-threading thing was very interesting and I, and I split the screen into eight parts. Yeah, luckily there's no input yet. So the operating system thinks sometimes that everything is broken in here. Yeah, and uh, yeah, but uh, with this beginning of this multi-threading, I'm looking up how many uh, threads are available on my CPU, and then I divide the screen on the y-axis um, by the number of threads that are possible by the hardware, and yeah, so each thread renders in my case, about one eighth of the screen. And yeah, since this whole synchroni synchronizing thing can be a little bit weird, at least for this initial synchronization, I need about half a millisecond, which is super much <laughs> in terms of rendering. So I'm, I'm trying to synchronize the rendering threads just once a frame but I believe uh, yeah but I believe if there are more no not more threads more frames and if the re resolution is lower then it takes up less work because the threads take usually roughly the same amount of time to complete their tasks so yeah, so when I reduced the resolution to something much more old school like, like uh, 320 by 240, I got up to two, uh, no, I got up to 1500 frames per second. So the synchronizing thing can't be too bad. Yeah, but, but anyway, I try to let them render just once a frame 
So my next goal is to implement some kind of rendering vertex buffer, at least for the software rasterizer when I start to go into OpenGL and hopefully Vulkan in the future, then this whole rendering will be different, of course. But um, yeah, since this is software rasterized, <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> you have to do some some weird hacks. And um, maybe it's it's interesting how my software rasterizer works by itself. I mean, there are different possibilities how to implement one. And I take heavy use of barycentric coordinates. So I create bounding boxes for, for triangles and then I try to determine <laughs> where the triangle is with this uh, uh, with these barycentric coordinates and this works quite well but if you don't take care then the performance can be quite low is um, especially you shouldn't calculate the barycentric coordinates once a pixel so i tr so i just uh, calculate them twice per per line and when I recognize that uh, the end of the triangle in this line is reached, then I s go on to the next line, and yeah, and with these two calculations of barycentric coordinates per line, I calculate the initial value and the difference to the next value, and then I keep adding <laughs> um, the differences onto the following pixels for each following pixel of course and so I can calculate where the triangle is if I compare them to the uh, border values of these barycentric coordinates so uh, they have to be between 1 and 0 each three of them to be in to be uh, indicating that this very pixel is inside the triangle and luckily with these barycentric coordinates I can calculate the texture coordinates as well and yeah so this kind of works quite decently somehow yeah and uh, with these bounding boxes it's of course important that um, that your bounding box is at most as big as your screen otherwise you will r calculate stuff that you don't need and this is always going to hit your yeah on your performance and it's going down and something which i recognized maybe maybe you did too during this video that there are some slight artifacts because i calculate these uh, coordinates uh twice per line and then i keep adding up and since i'm using floats which was kind of confusing for my roommate um i have these these artifacts going on over here i it seems to be a little bit uh yeah i don't know if you could say blurry it's not really blurry but but you can see it's kind of distorted and if you go to the left side where where the ca values are cal uh, calculated then you see it's much much sharper and there's no distortion going on um i tried to resolve this by using integers and i even thought this might be faster but it wasn't somehow and the result was a uh, slightly different but I like this. Um, <laughs> I like this uh, floaty way of things a little bit better. So I stick with it. If there was no performance difference, I thought I just thought the visual experience is slightly better. I mean, it's not perfect, but uh, it's slightly better. And maybe, maybe I will recalculate the values if yeah if. I added too many values on top of each other, maybe about half a screen, I recalculate them, I don't know. Um, yeah, and what else happened? 
Um, I implement se I implemented set buffering, which you can see he you see this triangle here, and it has an intersection with this other triangle. So, I mean, it doesn't look too impressive, but it's definitely definitely something that is very important for a renderer to have set buffering. Yeah, and what is the general goal of my engine? I would say that it's uh, usable by old and new hardware. So anyway, I already described this uh, with another person that it would be some kind of retro-like game engine where you uh, where your user is not dependent on having <laughs> A fancy graphics card since I want to have functionality or um, yeah I want to have functionalities like like uh, the user being able to to choose its own, uh, his own or her own resolution and how detailed everything is and if he doesn't have a very good computer then he should be able to to downscale all meshes and all and all the textures so it, the game takes up less resources and is therefore faster and um, yeah 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 and this whole different renderer thing since I want to have different renderers I um, yeah it's hard to describe but this goes into the same direction so uh, I want to implement an OpenGL 1.1 renderer as well so even very old hardware could render these games but of course there would be some kind of visual in, uh, visual influence so for example the soft rasterizer won't support different textures per vertex or w per triangle so there's uh, just a single texture going on later on but how this goes I will explain much later down the road but for now this is what I have maybe it's interesting and if you have some more questions or ideas or if you even want to participate the github link is down below or if you want to ask questions of course you can ask them in the comments and I will happily reply and um, yeah have a nice day and see you hopefully next week for the second devlog for my new engine bye